It's every musician's dream to start a band, write your own music, play local shows, and grow an audience to be proud of who will buy your merch and listen to your music religiously. Obviously, not every musician experiences this. In fact, a vast majority don't. Although one musician from Perth was able to experience this life dream not just once, but twice, and at the same time. This man is Birds of Tokyo and Carnival's frontman, Ian Kenny. Ian Kenny grew up in Perth and first started Carnival with his high school friend Drew Goddard in the late 90s. The band were inspired by new metal and prog rock outfits such as Korn, The Deftones and Tool. Check out some of their earlier work and the Korn influence here. <laughs> After the release of the band's second EP and an array of lineup changes, they had grown to have a modest underground following in the local Perth metal scene. In 2005, Carnival released their debut album, Thamata, to critical acclaim and began to find airplay on Triple J, which helped them develop a national following. It was also around this time that Ian Kenny was approached by Adam Spark of a band named Tragic Delicate to sing on some music he had written for publication rights. The results of the recordings were so good, they decided to release the songs themselves and begin performing them locally under the name Birds of Tokyo. In 2007, Birds of Tokyo would release their debut album, Day One, which came out with a lot of airplay on Triple J. I think the fact that listeners and presenters recognized Kenny's voice from Carnival helped draw attention to the birds and it resulted in a few of their songs hitting the hottest 100 of that year. All of a sudden, Ian Kenny found himself lead singer of two very successful Australian rock bands, both with healthy fan bases nationally and both with strong prospects moving forward. In the next years, both Birds of Tokyo and Carnival would release excellent albums, being Universes and Sound Awake, respectively. Both albums featured heavily on Triple J's Hottest 100s and solidified their fan bases for years to come. I consider Sound Awake to be one of the greatest and most underrated Australian albums of all time, Famous American musical YouTuber Rick Beato is also a big fan of it. Check this out. The record's called Sound Awake, and it's one of the greatest sounding albums you'll hear for heavy rock. Check it out. In 2010, Birds of Tokyo would release their third album, which was self-titled and gave them mainstream success with the song Plans receiving heavy commercial airplay and a plethora of ARIA nominations. They followed this up with more commercially successful songs such as Lanterns and Good Lord, which both charted strongly in the ARIA charts and essentially gave them the status of a successful pop band in Australia. While Bird's songs were being used for commercials and in movie soundtracks, Carnival continued to cement themselves as one of modern prog rock's strongest exponents with the release of their third album, Asymmetry. Carnival have only released one single since that 2014 album and are supposedly preparing to expose us to a fourth album, 10 years in the making. The thing that stands out to me in these two projects, both fronted by Kenny, is that he was able to balance two very different sounding projects both at the same time, and define two very strong streams of success. Kenny's versatility in lyric and melody writing is quite extraordinary, really. The fact he could write a chart-topping heartbreak love song in Good Lord, and also an intricate layered critique on society in Set Fire to the Hive, is a sign of undeniable talent. This is all while displaying brilliant vocal range, from soft, sweet cadence in many bird songs, to the tenacity required while fronting Carnival. The other thing I find quite remarkable is that neither of these bands could be considered side projects. They are literally both as time consuming as each other for him and he essentially balances both perfectly to appease fans on each side as much as possible. Well the Vool boys haven't released much lately but they have been playing some pretty big shows over the past couple of years. I can't think of another lead singer who has had such great success with two vastly different bands at the same time. Obviously, there's plenty of people who've got side projects out there. For example, Josh Homie from Queens of the Stone Age. He fronts another project called Them Crooked Vultures. Or you could say Chris Cornell had great success with both Soundgarden and then Audioslave. 
but they were functioning at separate times in those two examples I gave. Can you think of any other singers like Ian Kenny who fronted two bands at the same time with such great success?